Hi, this is Flagship Medicine and today we're gonna talk about one of the most frequent scenarios in our clinical practice and the mechanism behind glucocorticoid-induced leukocytosis. Glucocorticoids are steroid hormones secreted by our adrenal glands. They are involved in major processes in our body like the immune response, cardiovascular reproduction, mood and cognitive function, water and electrolyte balance, and growth and development. They are one of the most efficient anti-inflammatory drugs, acting as immunosuppressants and immunomodulators. White blood cells are vital components of the blood and of the immune system, fighting with infections and other toxic agents. According to Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, they are composed mostly of neutrophils, then lymphocytes up to 40%, monocytes, eosinophils, and lastly basophils. And now, let's talk about the real deal. Leukocytosis reflects the number of white blood cells found only in the bloodstream. Neutrophils, being the most abundant type of leukocyte, play a key role in understanding this change. The most important mechanism is demargination of neutrophils. Apart from circulating in the bloodstream, neutrophils are bound to the endothelial lining through adhesion molecules like L-selectin. When glucocorticoids bind to their specific receptor, this complex enters the nucleus and inhibits the mRNA of L-selectin. The result is that L-selectin's production is decreased, thus neutrophils cannot bind to the endothelium making them happy pandas wandering in the bloodstream. We have to keep in mind that this mechanism is also involved in glucocorticoids anti-inflammatory properties. The second mechanism is delayed migration of neutrophils from the bloodstream. But how do neutrophils circulate from the bloodstream to the accident or infection scene? In this journey, neutrophils follow five steps. The first one is tethering, which creates loose bindings of neutrophils through PSGL1 and endothelial cells through E and B selectin. This ensures that the next step, rolling, will be made in the direction of the blood flow. Afterwards, neutrophils and endothelial cells express integrins like LFA1, MAC1, and ICAM family that ensure the firm adhesion. The next step is crawling of neutrophils through elongation and spreading of pseudopods, and lastly, transmigration through the molecules of formation. But what is the effect of glucocorticoids in this process? They downregulate and reduce the level of adhesion molecules, resulting in delayed migration of neutrophils from this circulation. Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to find out more, click on the next video.